I'm Kendra Kent and I teach kindergarten. Yay! <laughs> I've been a kindergarten teacher for five years and uh, since, since I started teaching I've used comics in my classroom and um, I've used them uh, in lots of different ways and I'll talk about some of the different ways I have and, and the success I've had with them. But first before I want to uh, get started I want to talk about when I say early childhood I mean pre-k to maybe the beginning of first grade. Three years old to six years old. And developmentally, the way these children learn are completely different than an eight-year-old or a 10-year-old or 15-year-old or an adult. So um, some of the things I'm gonna talk to you about may seem inherent to you, but they are not inherent to a three-year-old. So um, I do apologize if I'm speaking down. I'm used to speaking to five-year-olds and I gotta pee, I gotta pee, hurry, hurry. So um, uh, first I want you to look at this. Do you understand what this says? Probably not. I don't know what it is. I just typed in a bunch of symbols. This is what our alphabet and number system looks like to a three-year-old to, you know, a four-and-a-half, five-year-old. It's what it all looks like to them. That's why, and um, you may have seen this if you have um, young children or somebody, a little kid's ever written you a note, and they bring it to you and they say, read this to me. And you look at it and it looks like this because that's what words and letters look like to them. And so when I use comic books in my classroom, it kind of bridges this gap. They don't need letters and numbers because they can read this. They don't, they don't need the words. They don't need anything. They can read this story. And when I say read, I mean they read it. They understand it. You give a child a picture book, a comic book, and they make up a wild story. And they're excited about it and they know what everybody's saying and doing and why they're doing it and how they're doing it. And so they are reading without knowing or being able to read a single word or a letter or anything. Um, most, most early childhood age children can understand and follow the simple storyline. This facilitates pre-reading and um, ESL students, students who do not understand the English language, understand pictures because pictures transcend language. In, in my classroom, I use comic books in four ways. I use it for reading, I use it for writing, believe it or not, pre-K children can write. We do math and we do complicated math. We don't do one plus one equals two. That's something that's almost inherent to a child. We do, it's pre-algebra, it's pre-geometry. We're not messing around. We're setting the foundation for for those upper level grades. And then I've used it in my classroom with special education children. And I've had several autistic children that um, have really benefited from comic books. First is reading. Comics do fall naturally into the development of literacy for reading readiness for children. Because before we can teach a child how to read, before we can say this letter is A, A says A, ah, we use this letter when we read. Um, we put it together with other letters, it makes a word. We put words together, it makes a sentence. Before we can get to that point, I have children look at pictures. And I hold up a book to them, and it may say, A pizza, A bat, A whatever. I don't really care that they're memorizing that and just mimicking it back to me. I want them to look at the picture and then start to associate that picture with that word. And just like you were saying before, when we say tree, we get it in our brains. So that's how we teach children to read, too. Um, and comics, little kids are just full of energy, full of energy. I'm exhausted at the end of the day. Um, and, and they love to make up stories and it is such an important part of their development to make up stories and comic books fall right into that. The symbol up here, what is, who is that? What is that? Superman, we all know Superman. Um, little kids know Superman too. And we call that environmental print. Little kids may not be able to read McDonald's, but they know what McDonald's means. And so many comic book characters are mainstream now, especially for the little ones, that they understand this as environmental print as well. And um, in reading, things are sequential. And so um, comic books are sequential. We don't read it from the end to the beginning. We don't read it from the bottom to the top. We read it in a sequential way. Um, these are some of my kids. As you can tell, comic books, Boys love them, girls love them. Every age, you know, every sex, every, you know, it doesn't matter. They love them and they can find something interesting. And I remember this day when I took these pictures, it was several years ago, they were all sitting in a um, circle and we were just having some downtime. They had actually just had popsicles. And um, 
and they were yelling at each other, no, look at mine, no, look at mine, though this is happening in mine, no, this is more important. And they were all telling something that happened, even though they could not read. Um, and these kids were my struggling readers. They were in a special group. But you know what? They may have hated to read the readers that I had for them, but they loved this. Uh, again, we read left to right, top to bottom. Teaching kids to do that is so easy when you have the panels, you follow, you understand what's going on. And the kids, um, it's so much easier to teach them that than it is if I have a big page of text and I say, okay, watch me move. That's so boring. But this they love. And they'll watch this and practice this with me. Writing. Young writers learn by example. I will stand up all day long and I will write and they will come and practice writing. But I start teaching writing by teaching drawing because they can express to me what they want to say in pictures. And comic books express in pictures. I teach kids it is okay to tell a story using only pictures. It takes me an entire year to teach kids how to write. But they can pick up a pencil and we can draw a stick person. Or we can think about how to draw a dog. Okay, well we're going to do a circle here and a circle here and we're going to put some triangles and we break it down. Eventually then that goes into them um, dictating to me and I'll write what they mean and then them labeling it themselves and then we begin to write more and more and by the end of the year they can write two sentences. Here's an example of a kindergartner's work. Uh, we took a big piece of paper, folded it into six panels and she told a story and there is absolutely a story there even without my words that I wrote for her. She dictated this to me. There's a story there. I'm on the way. The baby's on fire. The baby's crying. Don't cry. I've got you. I'll get you some milk. Don't cry. And then we're back at the house. She's getting the milk. The end. They're safe at home. Her mom just had a baby. As you can tell, she wrote about what was uh, inherent to her and what she knew. This next one, um, this year I happened to have a comic, uh, a Blue Beetle, Justice League with Blue Beetle in it. And um, one of the little boys, Preston, he loved this comic book. He was enamored with it. And so he wanted to emulate what he had read from that book. So, um, and that's what he did. And he did a great job there. And um, I use comics for math. We can categorize, which is very important, good versus bad, uh, capes, no capes. Blue, not blue, DC, Marvel. Um, however we want to do that. We can sequence with the ordinal numbers, first, second, third. Patterning, we can do Superman, Green Lantern, Superman, Green Lantern, which is A, B, A, B. We learn position words. Superman is under the building, in front of the car. And concepts of time. They can tell me that that's happening at night and they know because they're looking at the clues. You can't see it during the day because that's a light. The bat signal's a light. Um, there's the moon behind it. So obviously that's happening during the nighttime. The special education kids, last year I had a child in my classroom. He was emotionally disturbed, autistic, and mentally retarded. Um, I love him so much. I miss him so much. Um, he related to the world around him through comic books. He was Spider-Man and you could not tell him he wasn't Spider-Man and even when he ripped everything down off my walls when he was trying to climb it it was not <laughs> him who did it it was Spider-Man so um, but this is a social story and this is the way that that we spoke to him when he would be too aggressive with his friends we would say Batman has a lot of friends Batman is strong but he always plays easy with his friends Batman never hurts his friends you say that over and over and over again. You carry this with you. All of the special teachers had it. All of the aides had it. And whenever something would happen, they would pull this out and they would, um, they would read it to him. And uh, it really helped. And he knew that it was okay. And he was safe because as, as you may or may not know, autistic children don't, um, they don't transition well from place to place. So this really helped him and um, it really helped me a lot. And while, Everything, every question I would ask him, his answer was, sure. <laughs> if I gave him a comic book, he could dictate an entire cartoon that he had watched and say almost exactly verbatim. So he was able to express himself in that way. So anyways, um, kids love the comics. Teachers should love comics too. This is, we're doing a documentary about comic books in the classroom. And you can check out our um, website right there. So thank you guys.